Hey! So in this video, what I want to go over is how to model this hard surface shell. Primarily dealing with curved surfaces, blending into flatter areas, doing cutaways and things like that. Now this drone, I'm not sure if I mentioned before or not, uh, is for my friend Nathan LaRouche. Uh, he's making a short film and this drone is going to be uh, inside there. And so he asked me if I could texture it and just finish off the model. So that's kind of what, uh, what I've been doing uh, on, on my spare time. And um, there were some redesign notes, uh, particularly I kind of wanted to redesign some of it uh, because I just thought that some of the shapes were kind of not exactly aesthetic. Uh, I understand that he wants to have a more industrial look. Uh, this look kind of went a little bit too far into the whole commercial, you know, let's make it look pretty uh, kind of look. but. I th I'm pretty sure I'll be able to strike a middle ground. In this case, in this video, I just kind of want to replicate this because it is about really teaching and showing how my process is um, not so much about achieving that final look because I don't know yet. I, I might have to revisit this several times. Now, there's the other thing I'm going to be going into later is the package that this drone is carrying. It will be appearing in the film a little bit later on. And so it will be existing uh, outside of the drone. And quite frankly, right now it's very bland, so I want to redesign that. And I think I'm going to be using Blender, uh, the Hard Ops plugin for that, just because, you know what, it's, it's fun to use. Um, so yeah, you know what? With that said, let's get into the modeling. So here is the older shell. Now, one of the design notes that Nathan gave me was that he actually wanted to extend this wing to go a little bit further down. And one of the reasons why is because he wants to put some kind of like solar panels in this. So I was thinking, you know what, why not make it something like the Tesla solar panels that they're putting on top of uh, like roofs, the uh, shingles. So I thought, you know, maybe we could integrate it into the overall shell and that could actually look pretty cool. Now, what I didn't like about this one in particular, I mean like, yes, okay, so it looks a little bit industrial, like kind of how he wants, but you know, there's a bunch of things in here that don't make sense. Uh, first of all, which uh, is the length, doesn't make sense to me because it leaves a lot of this frame exposed. If you were to make it a little bit longer, uh, I guess it loses some of its, uh, of its uh, aesthetic sense. Uh, it, I mean, it kind of looks cool to see all these uh, mechanical bits, but I mean, you could definitely lengthen it a little bit and protect m some more of the gear. And the reason being is that if this thing was to be serviceable, you could easily pivot up and work inside it. Uh, should you need to. Now, the, my problem is really with this thing is just, you know, this lump. I mean, it's got all these straight edges, right? And then you got this lump. It's not like there's any kind of electronics that go underneath. At the same time, it doesn't make it any more aerodynamic. So when I'm making my own, I, I was kind of thinking, okay, I'm going to have these flat edges here, this overall top portion relatively flat. I would extend the wings a little bit further down, and at the same time, the curvature that I would have would be a little bit longer, so that uh, it would make it just a tiny bit more aerodynamic. Um, so yeah, so those are pretty much the notes, and uh, I thought I would experiment, so I experimented one day, and I came up with this. Now this kind of went a little bit too far, I, I think this wing kind of extends a little bit too much, uh, especially because like from the bottom it al almost just... I don't know, it almost ends up looking like a stingray in a way, and he doesn't want that. Now, without this piece of geo, it looks a little bit more like the old one. Um, but again, it has the bigger curve, and this way I'll be able to put all sorts of like electronics and maybe some cameras uh, in the front, especially if I end up making this curve go in a little bit more. I'll be able to put some visual cameras that this thing can use when it's uh, navigating. I mean, especially since, like, uh, nowadays they're putting on cameras or, or, or all sorts of sensors on drones to be able to detect uh, any kind of obstacles so they don't run into things. So that's definitely not a bad idea. Anyways, let's get into it. Let me start off by creating a top shape. So if I go into my top view and then I go into basic, whoopsie, boopsie, okay, basic, and then use the cube tool, I'm going to use the cube tool to create a plane. I'm not going to draw the, or like extend it downwards, which would in fact create a cube. In my case, I just need something to draw the first plane and then just drop the tool afterwards. So go back into the perspective, take the manipulator, move it up, 
whereas these are still visible in case you want to move some of these edges around. In my case, I'm just going to drop it, so I'm just going to press Q and exit that tool. So now I have a single polygon, and that's all I really need to start. Select the first edge. I'm actually going to move it just a tiny bit further back just to kind of line up with the front of the model. And then I'm going to use Edge Extend, which can be found, by the way, over here, Edge Extend. My hotkey is Z. Okay. I'm going to use it one, two, three times, like this. And it's kind of going to give you this curve E shape. Let's test it by pressing Shift Tab. And as you can see, there is a bit of a curvature. It's nice and smooth now, but the problem is, is that the smoothness is kind of carrying through to the part of the model where I want it to be nice and flat. So I'm going to add another edge to the front, and this should hopefully stabilize this portion. Right? As you can see, the curvature on this part is not changing anymore. So the curvature is only carried through through this polygon and eventually just kind of flattens out. Now here's the thing, this back of the model is supposed to kind of go up again, flap up, so more edge loops towards the back, and you know what, just for another control edge, one in the middle, let's move this one up, so at least now I have a little flat, straight, and then loop down, smooth it, let's see what we got. Cool. Next up is to work on the wing, right? But before I do that, I kind of want to shrink the front, so select these three, move them in, move them in again, and now as you can see we're start, sort of starting to get a little curve outwards, right? It's just going to make it a little bit more aesthetic and more sportsy looking. Now granted this is supposed to be industrial looking, not, not, not so sportsy, but you know what? It's, it's a flying object, I mean it's supposed to be aerodynamic at, at its core, so I don't want to completely leave that aspect out. Now, here's the thing, so Nathan wanted me to extend this part and create sort of like a wing, sh wing shape uh, on the side. So I will be working on that, but you know what, before I do that, let me move this a little closer to this hydraulic. And I will be eventually extending outwards from there. Um, I think it's going to be a little bit more aesthetic if I work on it that way. Okay, so let's move all of it inwards. And now, let's extend this outwards kind of like he wanted because he wants a little bit of a wing and then move this down like so and I'm really hoping that none of this penetrates because here's the thing right now it's not penetrating but the surface is gonna have a thickness so I might not be able to go this low or I might actually just have to select everything um, like that and move it all up I mean I got two options I think I'm gonna take this one okay so now when I look at this object right and I smooth again. Okay, sure, it starts off kind of looking like a swoosh here, but as soon as I go into here, it looks nowhere near as nice. So I'm going to have to definitely take this vertex and start moving it backwards. And of course, it looks like a swoosh from this angle. It looks like sort of like a swoosh from this angle. I might have to move this back out, right? And then play around with some of these vertices. Now here's the thing, here's a little tip. You're not going to get all these shapes right away, right? I mean, this is something that you're going to have to look at from all angles to make sure that there's no not, nothing like this, for example, happening, right? Where it looks like a swish from this angle, but then as soon as you go over here, it sort of starts looking wavy, right? You probably don't want that, so go around all sorts of angles and try to make sure that that shape say, stays more or less consistent. Um, usually that'll give you much nicer forms. Now here's the thing. When I... I'm working in subdivision mode and I try to put lines down like this, right? I'm thinking, I'm hoping to get a straight line and it doesn't look like it. Of course when I on subdivide, it's still not perfectly straight, which kind of sucks, right? Because it's really trying to average out the overall result. But here but that's mostly because of the fact that I've been working on this side and this edge extends out and this one goes in, so now it's trying to again average out and it just ends up looking really bad. So I'm going to delete that side, and then the first thing I'll do is I'll select this, go into Action Center, make sure I'm in Origin mode, and then when I go to Mirror, and Mirror is under Duplicate, Mirror, Shift V in my case, and click here, uh, I am mirroring on the Z axis, and as you can see my center lines are way off, they're not even close. And this is going to be important because the symmetry tools in Moto are not exactly the greatest, 
So in my case, I, I usually end up doing a delete and recreate uh, to kind of give me a nice mirror. And then I'll go into vertex merge. Vertex merge is over here, vertex merge. Okay, so now at the very least, now that I know that my center line is nice and straight, if I ever come into a case where I'm editing this side, right, so let's just say I do something like that, or, um, or I pull this out a little, right, but any, any kind of work that I do on one side, I can at any time go ahead, delete this, and recreate it relatively quickly, right, let me subdivide it just to make sure. I'm still having some somewhat of a successful form. And for now, this is working okay. So next up, what I want to do is I want to flatten out the top, right? Because right now, you'll notice that the curvature kind of goes all the way across the entire model. And I don't really want that. I want to make sure that the top stays relatively flat. And then we add a sort of curve, a sort of arch down the front that's going to be harder edged and then also stabilize this line so that it's not like perfectly curved across here. So the first thing I'll need to do is I'll need to add some control edges around this part of the model. So let me unsubdivide for now and create some control edges. So one, create, put it on the side, create another one, and put it a lot closer to this edge. So now when I subdivide, you'll notice that the angle is starting to get sharper. If I place another one, okay, like that, like that, like that, then the end result is actually going to be sharper and sharper and sharper. All right, that's kind of what I want. This is pretty good. And it's starting to curve inwards on this part of the model. And this is actually pretty nice, right? Next up, you know what? Because I've already done this kind of arch before, this kind of swoosh, what if I experiment and do something else where I kind of move this up like that, so now I have a sort of swoosh, but it's a, a little sharper. Okay, almost like a check mark in a way. And the reason why is because I might want to extend this even further down. Maybe not in the same object, right? I might actually want another object that kind of continues this plane. So this one might not even go as far. It might only go this far, right? But maybe if I just copy this, or rather, if I just extend this one here, okay, if I cut and paste and just move backwards, now I have two objects that are still kind of following the same plane, and this one could be something else entirely, right? I mean, this one could be a perfectly flat kind of um, beat up object, you know, that'll kind of like, it'll sort of act like a bumper in a way, right? Even though this is the most, uh, this is the part that extends the most, but at the very least on the bottom, it'll protect the package a little bit more so. All right, so maybe that's what I want to do. And again, all, right now, I'm keeping it as simple as possible for the sake of exploration. So let me see what we got here. And right now, as you can see, my overall material is very white and my specular highlight is very sharp. And it's kind of hard to tell if there's any kind of glitches, any kind of pinches across the surface. So the first thing I'll do next is I'll go into sh the shading tab and I'll press M and create a new material. So in my case, I already made one. It's called Shell, so whatever you name, uh, it'll pop up under here, under the Shading tab, right? And I'm going to click on the material, and I'll do a few things. One, uh, my main concern was to lower the color or shade of the object to make it a little bit darker, and then also intensify the specularity and also the roughness. Reason being is that now, if you look at this, right, if I especially, if I look at the highlight, which is happening here. Maybe I went a little bit too far with the roughness, but I want something that I can see, and I also want it to be intense enough that I can now check out as I'm um, navigating around the model. Now here's the thing. When I go into unsubdivided mode, it's hard to see. If I go into subdivided mode, it's a little bit better, but there's just not enough subdivisions in this surface to be able to tell because it kind of falls apart on some angles. So you might have to go into uh, a higher degree subdivision in order to be able to actually tell the difference, right? So in my case, properties, mesh, and under Catmull Clark subdivision, which is the shift tab, uh, if I go into this and turn it up to four or something like that, now I have a lot more subdivisions and this is going to resolve a lot nicer and actually show me the results kind of that I want. 
And you know what? And so far, it's it's kind of working. I mean, I, I'm kind of liking this. Now, here's my only problem, is that when I'm subdividing, right, this curve is kind of making its way onto this hydraulic, which is not good. So I might actually have to separate, or rather, move this a little bit further out to the side. Okay. And once again, select this. I'm middle clicking to select usually, just because this way I can select through. And right away I notice, uh oh, there's a little vertex here. And this is the one thing nice that's nice about Moto, is the fact that it'll shade your vertices nice and harsh, right, for the foreground, and it'll give you like this kind of hint what's happening in the back, especially if you're using middle click to select, right? So I can actually just press control, middle click, and deselect that vertex. Okay, so we have this. Um, now here's the thing, I really should be bridging this back. I kind of made too many changes with that. Now the reason why is because I want to subdivide this and keep this entire thing and then eventually delete those polygons when there's more uh, information there so it'll keep a lot better without me having to introduce too much information or too many edges into this low resolution result. So you know what? Next up, wh what I'm going to have to do is to actually freeze the geometry and look at the frozen geometry. So that is under geometry and freeze. Now your model really should be subdivided first, right? And in my, my case, I have subdivision level four, geometry, freeze, and let's look at what we got. So we got something like this. And quite frankly, there's maybe too much geo across here, too much geo across here. So you know what, let's undo that. Let's try to go to subdivision level three and freeze again. So it's actually going to create the geometry out of what you had. And this is a little bit better. Now notice something here is that I have enough geometry here that now that I can delete and it's going to, it created all the support geometry that I'm going to need in order to keep this shape a lot better without affecting it. And here's the thing, once we get to a certain point, we actually don't need to subdivide anymore. We can just keep working with this high resolution result. And just shift, right clicking to erase select and add to the selection, control, uh, right clicking is subtract raycast selection. Okay, now when we delete, I now have so much control geometry that even if I were to subdivide this result, you'll notice that it's keeping that shape very nice and tight. This is good. But again, this might be a little bit over overkill. In my case though, does it really matter? No, not really. It's okay. Again, for now, what I'm only planning to do with this is just to have something to show to Nathan and have him eventually approve of a design. So this is really the only purpose for this. is just to do a little bit of experimentation, get an approval, and then move ahead with the rest of the texturing. Okay, so this is okay. Now the only thing I really don't like is actually this curve. It kind of Instead of it being a nice arch, it just kind of curves in and stays straight and eventually disappears. Um, so I might want to fix that. see we're having some kind of shading artifacts but that's mostly because the geometry is not complete um, over here you'll see some really odd shapes so let me at this point delete one side of the model and just replicate it on the other side and see if those bad shapes are still happening and in fact they are right so at this point I will have to start playing around with this and go ahead and actually quite frankly just refine it Now we're still having a little bit of an issue on this end, 
but I mean if I look at the curve I mean it goes up and down and it gets wavy so it's just a matter of fixing this I think and it should be a lot nicer and that is in fact a lot lot nicer now nice and smooth looks like a beautiful transition very nice as you can see the specular highlight is very clean all the way across I mean is it 100% perfect no but it's very close so let me delete one side of the model again mirror it over and of course my bad I need to go back into origin and do that now of course when I turn off the wireframe you'll notice that the result is not all that bad and again for now this is just a concept right okay so I've extended the wing like Nathan asked it's going over the body it's not making the whole thing feel too fat you know what I probably should mirror this object as well so it's not feeling too bad it doesn't feel too much like a commercial drone where you know there's too much curvature it's not too lumpy like the previous one it's got that harsher angle so I'm kinda liking that so next part what I'm going what I want to do is I want to start deleting some of these to expose the hydraulics so because I want this to be nice and straight I might as well make it nice and straight right and I'm gonna do that by going into the edge making sure I flatten it all on this axis actually I guess before I do that I probably should flatten this out so let's flatten this and now at the very least I have this flat now I want to make sure that this is nice and flat as well so I'm just going to move this over like so and if it's not perfectly flat then I can easily select most of these edges here and again flatten them out take this one do the same deselect deselect scale flatten press up 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 after selecting the first two edges once again flatten now let's subdivide and see what we got still nice and clean and of course now when, when we try to subdivide this model we're going to get much a much nicer result here and you know what let's see what happens if I actually move this down like, well you know what in fact move this down until this is flat flatten it down on the X oh is it the right axis no so flatten down down here move it down again and then flatten all of these and then when I subdivide now you'll notice that it's subdividing with a nicer uh, curve again I don't want the curve so I will take these and then bridge them and the reason why I'm gonna do that is because after I subdivide this result I want to make sure that I have enough information in here that I can then delete and then subdivide again to get like a really really you'll you'll see freeze well subdivide first freeze and let's see what we got as you can see there's enough information here the line is nice and straight beautiful <laughs> let me start deleting this but here's the thing again we have too much geom geometry right so let me undo that turn it down to three in the Catmull Clark subdivision. Once again, go back into freeze. And now we could start deleting. Okay, this looks actually very nice. And now watch what's gonna happen when I subdivide. See, when I subdivided it this time, it gave me a much nicer corner. The only reason there's an artifact here is because this hydraulic is actually overlapping or intersecting with my result. So, you know what? At this point, I could always take some of these edges, move them down. And usually I don't like to just move everything down all at once. I like to do it kind of incrementally, like this. So at least there's some kind of lead into it. And what's going to happen if I subdivide now? It's a lot better. Still not perfect. I mean, it's still overlapping here. But you know what? Maybe I could actually take the hydraulic and overall end. And it's no longer uh, intersecting. So because I want this hole to be on the other side of the model, let's select 
Let's delete right down the center. And mirror. Of course, the big problem right now is that it's not using the origin, so let's switch the action center back to origin. Mirror. Z. Perfect. Get rid of the wireframe. Look at the result. And so far, so good. Okay, next up, I'm going to be creating some of the cuts. Now, there's you got two options, really. You can create the cuts right now, and oh, oh so notice, notice this, this waviness. Hmm, not liking it, but you know what? Again, it's a concept. It's okay. Um, but here's the thing. So when I'm going to be creating the cuts uh, from the surface, I have two options. I can do it now, or I can do it later. Uh, I actually prefer to do it later, after I thicken up the surface. And the reason why is because I want to make sure that um, if I flatten later some of the normals uh, that are changing might actually interfere with the thickening process so I prefer them not to affect that so what I'll do first is I will now thicken up the surface so in my case I just need to go into thicken and extrude downwards ah, this is way too thick so let me zoom in a little closer of course, not all of it is looking great. I mean, right around here, it's not looking amazing, but here's the thing. There's not enough subdivisions across the surface, so I might want to select one of these edges, select the edge ring, and then create a new loop. In my case, I just want to create a loop at 50%, and then from there, bevel, and I don't want this many segments. I actually just want one. Well, the exact amount that you want. Okay, awesome. And now we have a slightly thickened up surface. And again, like I said, next up is to try to do the cuts. Now, I am generally using the Seneca Menard uh, quick booleans. Uh, I'm just going to use that. I'll explain to you a little bit after exactly how to do the booleans. Um, but in my case, I have to create a box first. And then make it thinner. I do want there to be a little bit of a gap between the surfaces, but not enough where it, I mean, where it kind of starts really separating itself. I, I kind of want the highlights to still travel across both surfaces of whatever this plane ends up uh, cutting up. So we select this box, move it over, and I want to kind of stay close to this uh, little hole here. Now. When I'm going to choose my cut line, it's actually going to be kind of like like this. Wh wh whatever the distance is between here and this edge, this corner, I kind of want to go equal distance before I end up cutting. That kind of design decision usually ends up working out pretty good. Okay, so I'm just going to select one polygon on the surface that I'm going to be cutting with. And send quick. And I, you know what? I like to use uh, solid 3D drill. The reason why is because it's a little slower to use than a regular Boolean, but the thing is, it actually ends up having you work for it, but the drill is usually perfect. So I end up having less problems in the long run. And in my case, okay, so this is a subdivided geometry. I need to unsubdivide. And as you can see, it's a nice and clean straight cut. So now I have to. Go ahead and delete all these. If you don't have Seneca Menard's like, Boolean script, then you'll have to do things a little bit differently within Modo using the basic Modo tools. So, uh, isolate your object first, right? Depending on what you want to Boolean from, right? In this case, I'm just going to Boolean from the swing. So, I will have to cut this out, cut those two things out. So, just by double clicking and pressing Ctrl X to cut and then paste into a new object. Okay, now I'm going to select this object here. Because the reason why I do this is because if I have too many meshes, then sometimes you'll get things like um, inability to solve uh, when, when you boolean or some other parts of meshes might uh, disappear and things like that. So in this case, I want to isolate. I, I know I want to cut away from this mesh in particular. Okay, so let me make, um, let me press the end button a few times. I, I always like to do this just to kind of give me some space to work with so I can create a new piece of duo here. And now I'm going to create a box. Now I'm going to go back to selecting this object here. And finally, now that this object, okay, so basically here's what the thing. 
my wing, the this object that I'm going to be cutting away from, and this box, the cutter, right? They are supposed to be the only thing, two things that are visible. Okay, uh, it'll make things a lot simpler for you. And then what you do is you make sure that you are in your wing mode. Okay, and your cutter object is in the background. Then you go into mesh edit, and you go to boolean. Then here, just go to subtract and drive mesh is background. And when you press OK, you notice that there's a bit, there's been a bit of a change to your piece of geometry. So I'm gonna hide the box, the cutter, and here's your resulting mesh. Again, if you're doing just concept work, this should be more than uh, adequate. But here's the thing: now you got a lot of geometry to clean up, and none of this geometry here has been actually connected. So um, either way, regardless how you boolean, it's going to require some effort on your part. Next step is to clean up this geometry here. Now because we're going to have problem geo like this, um, again I think we're going to have to do most of it by hand. And of course there's some subdivisions on this end so that's going to be a little bit problematic but you know what we could just create the press that press f to create a new face and really all i'm going to be doing is just selecting two opposite edges and just using the bridge function of course i could just do it this way by selecting multiple edges now here's the thing sometimes it's not going to work because the there's going to be a difference between the top and bottom, so sometimes you have to actually do it manually, like in my case. And of course, see, there's a I missed a little triangle, so that might have been my problem. Oh, another triangle. So, again, it is a bit of a laborious process, but it's not so bad. And as long as you establish your forms nice and quick, then you're not really wasting too much time. I'll deal with that part a little bit later. For now, this will be fine. Now this looks relatively stable from this point on because it is flat and, and I no longer have that arch. So what I could do now is just double uh, click to select everything and I'm going to deselect the front and back and actually because there's some extra edges on this end, I know that if I was to do a bridge and these vertices would be uh, in the way then what would happen is I'd have a bridge everywhere but then this area here would have a problem so you know what let me just quickly illustrate that to you if I double click and use bridge use bridge see it's not even allowing me to do the job really if I deselect this deselect this last edge so now I'm going to bridge the gap between the top and the bottom See, it's giving me a nice result. And over here at the end, I'm just going to double click this open edge, press F, and I'm done for the most part. I mean, there's still more work to do because now I have to do the other side. And then also I have to take these edges and kind of continue them through so that when I subdivide, I have an even kind of hard edge because right now you see the ugly, ugly, ugly result here. So in order for me to clean that up, I'm gonna have to do two things. One. Once these edges are kind of continued through, these ones here, okay, on the top and bottom, it's going to stabilize the uh, result on top. At the same time, I might actually have to add an extra edge running on top, like so, and all the way around here to really just kind of tighten up any kind of artifacts to this very, very uh, um, corner edge that's running ar around here. And usually, if you, ha if you add enough detail, to any given section, it's going to usually uh, push any kind of artifacts to the pixel level, at which point nobody will notice anymore. Now, 
because the hole on the other side is more or less going to be covered up exactly the same way as on this side, I'm going to completely skip the process of creating uh, you know, this side just because quite frankly, you know, why waste your time? Very cool. So now we have this. I mean, as you can see, it's a very nice sharp cut. Again, it kind of sucks when I actually have to subdivide this. And here's the thing, right now my Catmulx Clark subdivision is set to level three, and this thing has already been pre-subdivided and frozen. I really don't need the subdivision to be at level three anymore. I could probably leave it at one, and that would be most likely fine. Right, so I'm gonna subdivide this thing, and as, as you can st still see, the edges here are rough, and I will be cleaning them up a little bit later. For now, what I wanna do is I wanna continue these edges from here all the way throughout. So after having cleaned up the polygons around the edge, if I subdivide, you'll notice that this edge here has a nice shiny highlight all the way across, right? And there are still triangles, which I could get rid of, but they're mostly on the inside of the surface and away from this edge. So as, as long, I mean, as you can see here, all the polygons along the edge are all rectangles. The ones on this side, however, have triangles on the edge, and that's why they're appearing so ugly. So I could fix that, but because I might not even want to subdivide this model past this stage, right? So if I just leave it here, the model looks nice and smooth. And for a conceptual model, this is actually more than enough. And not only that, but if I end up rendering this thing, I, I can actually end up using the smooth... Uh, um, I can use the rounded shader to give me a nice bevel around all the edges, and I might actually be okay with that. So next up, just not to waste too much of your time, I, what I wanna do is I wanna make one more cut along the exterior here, and then I think I'm pretty much done. I think maybe a little cut out then the center, but that's more or less it. I mean, I think this chapter will pretty much uh, be over at that point. Okay, so I'm going to be doing another Boolean on here. This time the shape is not going to be a simple square like last time, so let me create a plane once again. But you know what? This time I'm going to do something a little bit different. I actually don't want the plane from that end. I want a plane like this so I can subdivide just a few times. Once here, once here, and then I can select this polygon, move it back. And the reason why I want this kind of shape is that when I subdivide this, I'm going to get a nice S shape. Okay, so when I end up moving it in, like that, I end up having an S shape that kind of works like that. Okay, now the one thing I have to be uh, remember what, what I said before is I want to have this shape, or rather the distance from here to this line, I kind of want to make sure that the distance from here to here is about the same, right? Same thing like here. I have the corner bevel, the distance from here to here and from here to here is pretty close. It doesn't have to be identical, but as long as it's pretty close, it'll be good enough. So now away from this cut, I want to make sure that from here to here, the distance is more or less the same as from here to wherever it's going to happen here. Right? Bevel, but bevel with more round lo rounded levels, so maybe something like five. 
and then like that, and that'll give you a relatively nice and smooth. And I'm going to use the solids drill again, and I'm going to have that. As you can see, I have a nice cut along there. I just have to make sure I select all of it and delete. Thank you.